I wouldn't say that Papua New Guinea is known as a food destination, but when I was there, I ate very well. And I was surprised to learn about the food culture of the local Papua New Guinean people. This is Living Local, Traveling Global with Kelly Farrow. Featuring United States Tour Operators Association member Swain Destinations in Papua New Guinea. We took most of our meals at the lodges on our trip with Swain Destinations, a United States Tour Operators Association member, and each meal was fresh, simple, local, and satisfying. However, Papua New Guineans eat much differently than travelers. Our custom itinerary included an education in what the locals ate in each region from farm to table. The important food in here is um, sweet potato. Our um, main food is every dinner time. We don't really mind about lunch. Every Papua New Guinean, we don't really mind about lunch. And even for the breakfast, we eat the leftovers from the previous night, but mostly we have them in the evening as a dinner. I love coming to markets anytime I travel because it's really an authentic slice of local life. Most of the people, we have our own gardening, but for the people who come from different provinces, like the teachers, nurses, or police, they're the ones who really go and buy them at the market. Alice is right. The market was bustling with all the local villagers that don't have their own gardens. And I was amazed at the size and variety of fruits, vegetables, livestock, and more. Possum hair! There's a focus on starches and vegetables in the Papua New Guinean diet, with animal proteins being limited to more special occasions. Yeah? Hi. Can I buy some peanuts? One peanut. One peanut. They sell the peanuts completely fresh. They're not boiled or salted. They're raw peanuts. So they taste actually a lot different than what we're used to. They kind of taste like a fresh pea or like a string bean. And they're kind of refreshing. You peel them off, you pop them in your mouth, a little snack on the go, right? Now, as we went from the highlands down to the lowlands, the foods that were common shifted, of course, based on the local landscape. Here along the Karawari River in the Sepik, the sago palm is a vital part of everyday nourishment. Swain Destinations included a look into the complex process of extracting flour from the sago palm trees. So this is a sago palm. It is a staple in the diet here in Karawari. And the process of actually getting the flour out of this is uh, a bit difficult. And you have to have some muscles because you have to pound it away. And you're pounding the pulp. And there's various other steps, but he's way better at it than I am. <laughs> Whew, sweating. Men and women divide up different parts of the process. And it's a communal effort. Using all handmade tools, the villagers fell the tree, then peel back the bark to reveal the white pith layer inside. This sago pith is then put into a porous basket so that water can flow through it, carrying out the important starches. So now is the part of the process where they're gonna strain the pulp to get the milky juice out. And they take fresh water out of this coconut, put it in here, and then you push it down, yeah? So you kind of like squeeze it all out and it's going out into this canoe and this is where they collect it. The water is later dried and the mixture resulting is a white powder which is used to make sago pancakes or sago pudding. Ooh, it's still hot. Yeah. Oh, it's a little like chewy kind of material. All right, sago pancake. And the main source of protein here in the villages are fish. And they usually smoke it since they don't have refrigerators. And it keeps a lot fresher, a lot longer. It smells pretty delicious too. In Papua New Guinea, I've noticed a lot of people have very red teeth. They're chewing on something. And what I figured out is they're actually chewing on betel nut. This little fruit right here gives you a little bit of like an energy rush and that's why a lot of people use it to help them work and to give them some energy throughout the day because it is really hot. So if you're going to do it right, you take the betel nut, you get the meat out inside, you put it in your mouth and then you start chewing it with this, the mustard bean and lime right in there, like this like powdered lime. And that, that combination is what gives you that little jolt. 